Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Word on Wednesday. It's our Wednesday uh, afternoon Bible study. We call it the Word on Wednesday or our wow service, Word on Wednesday. It is where we dive into the Word of God uh, and, and we hear what, what thus saith the Lord to us as we are uh, moving forward in life. It is my prayer that as we study the Word of God together, it's my prayer that uh, the Word uh, infiltrates your heart. It's my prayer that the Word infiltrates your spirit. It's my prayer that the Word infiltrates your soul. And that through that connection of the Word with the essence or the core of you, that you are changed, transformed, as the Bible says, from the inside to the outside. Amen? Yeah, amen. That, that, that's the whole purpose, hallelujah, of our relationship uh, and the relationship that we have with our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is so that we all might be transformed, that we will no longer uh, be who we were, but we will be who God has destined for us to be. Amen. Amen. He has He has a destin destiny uh, for each of us. He has a purpose. He has a plan for each of us. And it is uh, my prayer, my sincere prayer, my sincere desire uh, for all of those who are uh, sheep, the laborers of Progressive Community Church, all of those that share with us in ministry in whatever way uh, that you share with us, that, that the Word of God, that's why we call it Word on Wednesday, that the Word of God transforms your life. Because here it is. Here, here is the witness. Um, um, I'd rather see a sermon, as one uh, poem says, than to hear one any day. Yeah. I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. What does that mean? That simply means that each of you are sermons. I'm a sermon. It means the way that I live my life. Yeah. Somebody is reading you. Somebody is listening at you. And, and here it is. They'll make a decision to accept Jesus or not accept Jesus by the way you live. If they see that you come to church, but you that there is no impact, no transformation in your life, then they're going to say, why should I go? But if they know you, amen, or knew you, amen, before you, uh, BC, before you met Christ, uh -huh. amen, and now AC, after you done spent some time with Christ, if they know you before and then they can see a change afterward, they'll ask you what is going on where you are because you aren't the same and your witness is, it's the Christ that's in me. And so that's my prayer for uh, these Bible studies. That's my prayer for the word that it infiltrates us in such a way uh, that we are witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor Birch is going to come before, before she does. I just want uh, to share some things with what we got going on. Um, we're excited. God is doing a new thing. In, anytime uh, that God is doing a new thing, I, I was praying earlier today and um, just all like things just keep happening and and, and the enemy just keeps being busy. Mm -hmm. And and the spirit, the spirit of God, as I was praying, said, uh, that's because elevation is here. Yeah. That's because promotion is here. That's because you're going to a new place in the Lord. That's why, hallelujah, seems. So he said, don't even worry about it. I've already got it worked out. Yes. Amen. So don't, don't focus on that. Focus on me. 
Uh, and if you do that, the rest of that thing, the rest of those things would be okay. Amen. 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 So that was my, my meditative time this morning. I don't know who else needed to hear that, but I needed to hear that this morning based on all of the uh, things that I know that God is seeking to do uh, with us and through us. That's powerful. Amen. You just don't understand the, the, the magnitude of ministry that God has for us here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so uh, uh, be praying for us. We're in uh, phase two of the park. We've completed phase one. We've gotten uh, some donations in to help us with phase two of the park, but uh, we don't have everything that we need. And so I solicit your prayers uh, for the additional financial resources that are required for phase two of uh, the pollinator park, uh, which has been such a blessing. Um, I spoke at uh, Calumet Heritage. They had a forum and, and we were able to speak. And so it'll be listed on their site, all of the pollinator sites in the Calumet region. And it will be listed as one of the sites that people can visit okay. to see a pollinator park. Amen. 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 So be praying for phase two as we explore that. Harmony Bridge on Wednesdays. Amen. Um, be praying. We submitted a separate application to Whole Foods. Uh, right now we partner uh, with Mount Tabor Church in Chicago. And I've never met anybody from Mount Tabor. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for Eve's Garden. Uh, that's a ministry of Mount Tabor Church in Chicago who blesses us each week. And to uh, Deborah, is that her name? Deborah? Yes. And to Sister Deborah, who goes and picks the food up, brings it back to us. And I'll be honest, when we initially started, I told Sister Frida, no, don't want to do nothing more to no more. No. But it has been such a blessing. Amen. 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 That food is available. It's straight from Whole Foods. It's food that's available. Um, uh, so every Wednesday and every Friday, uh, Harmony Fridge is restocked. Today is that day at about 5 o'clock. If you know somebody in need of food, they can come to the refrigerator, open it up, take out what they need. No questions asked. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. That's Harmony Fridge. Um, I shared with you all what others call blessing boxes. They are cabinets that sit outside. Um, it's not original to me. Um, a client of mine in Fort Wayne had this idea. They implemented it, and it's just been a blessing to the Fort Wayne community. I asked him how, what we needed to do. We've done it. Amen? Yeah. So we purchased 10 cabinets or boxes. I've connected now with uh, 10 pastors. Amen. I was Amen. asking y'all to pray that we get 10 pastors in Gary who see the vision. I have 10 pastors all throughout Gary. Amen. Who have agreed to take one of the uh, cabinets and to make sure it stays stocked and supplied with non-perishable items, whether it's food items, whether it's deodorant, whether it's uh, bags, care bags that they put in there that have toilet tissue, toothpaste, uh, soap, all of those kinds of things. So in November, those will be coming, amen, and we'll have one here, and it's in places, it's one in every, I believe, every district uh, throughout the city of Gary, but it's also in multiple places throughout. So folks, just don't have to come here. You can go to a blessing box in a, at a church and a community that is nearest to you. Amen? Amen. 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 So God is, God is blessing us uh, tremendously in so many ways. Be praying for us. Uh, he has tiny homes that he still wants to do through us, um, as well as uh, uh, the, the um, produce store and, and the juice bar and the workout facility. Uh, all of this to, to not just bring wholeness from a spiritual perspective, because it's an awesome thing, and that's why 
That's why we're in ministry. Amen. For the spiritual nourishment. Amen. But 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 Jesus just didn't deal with the spiritual needs of people. That was his primary objective. But he also understood that people had some physical needs. Amen. That's why he was teaching one day. And they said, Jesus, send the people away so they can get something to eat. After they had been listening to him teach and preach spiritual principles and truths all day. Jesus said, no, I ain't going to send them away. Y'all feed them. They said, Jesus, to feed all these people, it would take, man, it's, we don't have enough money in the bank to do all this. He said, what, what's here? Two fish, five loaves. What did he do with them? He fed them. He met their spiritual needs. And then he met their physical needs. And so that's what we uh, uh, do as a church. We meet the spiritual needs and the physical needs of those who, those who are here. Amen. Amen. Pastor Birch, come on up. Pastor Birch, don't come. Uh, we've been in the book of Genesis, and I will tell you. So we started Genesis, but we didn't start in chapter 1. All right. We started I believe it was chapter 6, and then I jumped to chapter 25. Okay. And so God said, uh, start back at 1. So at some amen. point after we, get, we, after we get through the end, amen, we're going to go back to the beginning. Amen? Because God wants us to see some things where in the beginning. Amen? Amen. And so Pastor Birch is going to come and share with us today. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, good afternoon, everyone. Again, it's always a pleasure to be here and to have God's word being shared. I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we've been in Genesis a long time. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. And to hear him say just now, let me go back to the beginning, that's a blessing. Amen. And to hear him say that he skipped to 25, that's a blessing. Because today, God placed it on my heart, before we finish up with Jacob's, de with Jacob's death and burial, I've got to go back and, and go through the conflicts that Jacob and Esau had. Mm -hmm. Because in the legacy portions of, of the word that the Eastern Orthodox churches had, Esau came to the funeral. Mm -hmm. We don't know that in our Bible, but I want to... That's why it's important for me to go through all these conflicts that Esau and Jacob had throughout their life. So we're going to be starting, I'm going to be sort of reading overlaying scripture and putting in some history. Sometimes I might paraphrase it so that I can get the idea across. You know what I'm trying to say? So. I'm going to tell you where I am. I'm okay. going to tell you what book of Jasher I'm in because you can download the book of Jasher online. Just put in the book of Jasher PDF on your phone. It'll take you to a website where you can get the PDF yourself if you want to study out of that book or just see where she getting that from. I want to know where she got that from. So you can do that. So before we start again, let's pray. I always want to pray before we hear from God's word. So Father God, we give you thanks. We give you praise this afternoon, Lord God. I just want to thank you, Father, for who you are and whose we are in you. And that you, you, you've got us in this season where we can find out more, more detail about the lives of the people in Genesis and, and how that affects where we live today and how we're living now, Lord God. Because some of the same things that happened back in Genesis in the beginning is still going on in the world today. So I just want to thank you, Lord God, and praise you for your word and for this time of study. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 As I was going through the death of Jacob, I knew that in the history part of it, the legacy history books that are not in our Bible, but their history for the Jews, that Esau came to the funeral, okay, to, to mourn his brother's death. So I, needed, I said, you know, I need to go back before they find out that part of the story. I need to go back and show all the conflict 
that Jacob and Esau had while they were growing up. And so I said, Lord God, help me find them all. And so he did. Uh, and it started really when they were in their mother's womb. <laughs> okay. That's when the conflict really started. It tells us back in Genesis chapter 25 that the children, verse 22, Genesis chapter 25, verse 22, it says the children struggled in her womb <laughs> within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord what was going on. And the Lord said to her, there are two nations in your womb and two manner of people. <laughs> One will be stronger than the other and the elder shall serve the younger. And then when she delivered her children, the red one came out first. If they named him Esau, he was red, he was hairy. They named him Esau, but as he was coming out, Jacob had grabbed onto his heel. <laughs> like, hey, you ain't leaving me in here by myself. <laughs> you know? so, so even when they were born, there was confrontation, there was conflict. And the Bible tells us in, in 25, verse 27, that, that they grew up. And that Esau became a hunter. He liked to be out in the field hunting. But Jacob was a plain man. He just liked to be at home. Some people just homebodies. I I'm, I'm, might be considered a homebody. My son might be considered somebody like to be out in the field. Okay, so, but they're two different types of people, but they came from the same mother and the same father. Now, when they were, it, the Bible doesn't really have everything in chronological order. But because I, I've sort of been studying, I realized that when they were born, Abraham was still living. Abraham is their gr grandfather. So by the time, from, from the time they were born to the age of 15, Abraham's been talking to him, teaching him, his son and his grandchildren, about uh, walking in the ways of the Lord, you know. And, and as they grew up, he, they've been hearing Abraham talk about this, both of them. And um, when they were 15 years old, Abraham died. And they had a big funeral for Abraham. But it tells us after Abraham died that Isaac loved Esau because he liked to eat that meat that he brought home from the field. He liked that venison, that deer meat. But Rebecca loved Jacob. So now you've got a family dynamic that's dysfunctional because you got one parent like one, one parent like the other. And these, both, these two sons are in conflict one with another. So then we went on, I said, the next conflict they had was about the birthright. About the birthright. So it tells us that Esau was a skilled hunter, right? Yet in Genesis 25 on the 29th chapter, it says he came back from the field without nothing and he was hungry. Mm. And I'm like, well, he, if he's so skilled, he always come back. What happened? What happened that day when he didn't come back without any food? Well, our Bible doesn't go into what happened to Esau, but the legacy books do. They said that that particular day, Esau went out hunting. And when he was hunting, Nimrod, King Nimrod was there with, his two, with two of his mighty men. And his other mighty men, was, they were a distance away. But Esau saw that they were there, and he crouched down, and, the, and the, he didn't want them to see him. It's not like they hadn't seen each other before. Nimrod was observing, was observing Esau, and Esau was observing Nimrod. They had met before. Mm -hmm. They just did not like each other. They probably felt like one could out hunt the other. You know how competition is. I don't know. It doesn't go into that. But in Jasher, the book of Jasher, it tells us that 
Nimrod and his mighty men went to hunt in the same field where Esau was. And Esau was in that field. And they were removed a distance from him, so he just crouched down in the field. He concealed himself because he didn't want Nimrod to see him out there in the field by himself. Nimrod got two mighty men walking with him and got these other mighty men on the other side. But Nimrod and them came a little too close to where Esau was. So Esau decided to just jump up. He took his sword and he cut off Nimrod's head. Because he knew that Nimrod didn't like him. And he didn't like Nimrod. But once he did that, now he got to fight those two mighty men that's with Nimrod. So he fighting them and they calling for the other people to come. So he, he had to hurry up and kill them too. But then what he did was he took the clothes off of Nimrod. And now these other mighty men are running after him. He done killed Nimrod, killed the two mighty men. These other mighty men running after him. And he running. He got these clothes. He's running. He runs through his house. He did have his own house. He ran there. And then he decided, I better run to the city to my daddy's house. So then he ran to his father's house. And when he got there, he was tired. He was weary, he was scared, and his brother was cooking some food. Some beans, some red beans, <laughs> red bean soup, and some bread and some something to drink. And he said to his brother, he said, he said to his brother, feed me. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm weary. And Jacob said, well, sell me your birthright. Hmm. Well, Esau been through a whole lot of junk today. He didn't care nothing about his birthright right there. He worried about Nimrod's men finding him. He might die tonight. He, didn't, he said, look, I'm about to die. Verse 20, Genesis 25, 32, Esau said, said, I am at the point to die. What profit does my birthright mean to me right now? Hmm. I'm in trouble. Okay? And Jacob, Jacob said, swear to me. He said, look, just give me something to eat. I don't care. So, so Jacob wrote it up, and he fed Jacob. He fed, Jacob fed, fed Esau a bowl of red beans. I'm going to just say some cornbread, because that's how my mama would have said Some bread and a, and, a, and a glass of water. Maybe it was mine. Might have been some wine. I don't know. But it wasn't that much. It was some beans with some corn, with some bread, and something to drink. And Esau proved by that, by doing that, he proved that he didn't value his birthright. But when you, when you think about it, this was really ordained by God because God had already told Isaac who was supposed to have the birthright. Did he not? So, this had to happen. So now, also, when he got that birthright, it tells us at that same time that he got the birthright, he also got the burial prize at that same time. He said, he said well, give me, give me everything. He said, look, you can have it all, my birthright. You can have the birth, the birth, the, the burial plot. I mean, I, I don't want, I just want to get rid, I want to get something to eat, and I want to make sure these people ain't after me. Okay? So he, so now he's got the birthright, he's got the burial plot, Jacob does. It's going to be his anyway. Okay? So then uh, there was a famine. Isaac goes to the land of the Philistines. After the famine, he returns, and he just says, I'm going to send my sons to Shem so that they can be taught about the ways of the Lord. Esau said, I ain't going. Jacob went. So, and Jacob went for 32 years. So for 32 years, Esau has been with his father. And for 32 years, Jacob has been with Shem and Eber in college, learning the ways of the Lord. But Esau, because he didn't know the ways of the Lord, he, when he got 40, he 
He said, he's going to marry somebody. Well, there were some nice little ladies in the land. So he married him a Canaanite woman. Something that the Lord didn't want them to do. Because the Canaanite people served idols. They didn't serve the true God. And usually it's the mother that raised the children. In most families, we just get that. And usually it's the mother that's going to push on that child her religious views. Because mm -hmm. they're with the mother most of the time. So God told, was always told them, he told Jacob, don't marry no Canaanite woman. And he, and, and he, and he, he told, I'm sorry, he told Isaac, don't marry no Canaanite woman. Matter of fact, Abraham went and got Isaac's wife for him. Mm -hmm. So Esau went and married this Canaanite woman when he was 40. And then when they were 50, years old, when Jacob and Esau were 50, Shem died. So that's why Jacob came back home. He wanted to be back with his father. But when he came back home, at this time, well, let me go back. Shem was 600 years old when he died. Let me just show you how old the, the older people is. The people that was on the ark, on the flood, on the flood boat, they lived a long time. But as you kept, we keep reading the Bible, you see that the, the, the ages get less and less. Mm. Okay? So Shem was 600 years old when he died. And so when Shem died, Jacob came to his father in Hebron. So now, at this point, Isaac is getting old. Okay? He was 60 years old when his children were born. Now his children are 50 years old. He's about 110 years old. He's getting old, and he's, and he's having a hard time seeing. He can't see as good as he used to. And so he, he calls Esau. He said, Esau, come here. And Esau came and said, look, I want some of that meat that you, that you cook so good. He said, okay, Dad, I'm going to go get some for you. And he said, when you come back, I'm going to bless you with the firstborn blessing. But he wasn't supposed to do that. God had already told Isaac that Jacob was going to be the one to get the firstborn blessing. And Rebecca knew that. She knew that Jacob was supposed to get the blessing. But instead of her confronting her husband say, saying, look, do what's right, she decided to come up with a plot for her and Jacob to deceive Isaac to get the blessing. So we know that story. Mm -hmm. Jacob deceives Isaac. Esau deceives Isaac and he gets the blessing. And as soon as he got through feeding his daddy and getting the blessing and left out, I, uh, Esau comes back with the food. He done prepared the food and he comes in with some food. And Esau says, well, who did I just bless? Mm -hmm. Okay? So now you got another conflict. Jacob got the birthright. He got the burial plot. Now he done took my blessing. Esau was angry as I don't know what. This man has deceived me out of everything. Not only is he mad at Jacob, he's mad at his mother and his father. He's so angry, he go out and marry another Canaanite woman. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so he marries two Canaanite women. The first one's name was Judah, and the second one's name was Basemouth. But both of them were idol worshippers. They had gods of wood and stone and they were worshiped to them. And that, that, that provoked Isaac. It provoked Rebecca because here these children are that's growing up with Esau and they're learning all these ideal worship ways. So uh, by this time, after he marries his second wife, Jake, Jake, there's a time when Jacob comes back home. He returns back home. He says, look, I, 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 I want to go back and see my father. Now, after, um, let me go backwards. After Esau, after Isaac blessed Jacob, Jacob ran again to the house of Eber for 14 years. Mm -hmm. But then he came back and said, look, I'm tired of running. I'm going to go back to my house and be with my parents. 
But when he comes back, it was 14 years is a little bit of time for Esau to sort of calm down, but Esau never calmed down about what happened. So Esau, when Jacob returns, he's still getting threatened by Esau. Esau hated Jacob. He had him because he, he was supposed to be the firstborn son. But yet, because of how he responded to situations and circumstances, he gave up everything that he had. He gave up his birthright. He gave up the burial plot. And then he was deceived out of his blessing as the firstborn. So he said, I, I hate this dude. When my father died, I'm going to kill him. But Rebecca was sort of like a one of the women that sort of be listening behind the walls type of person, the fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. She heard everything that was happening around her. So she heard what Esau said. So she went to Jacob and she said, Jacob, he gonna kill you. You need to go to Haran, go to my brother's house for a while. And she talked to Isaac and he agreed. He said, look, I don't want you to marry no Canaanite women. I want you to go, go to Haran, Go to your mother's father's house. Her brother Laban is there. He got some daughters, and you could marry one of his daughters. So Isaac blessed Jacob. Now, when we read about Jacob going to Haran, we don't read that Isaac blessed him with gold and silver and all kind of food and provisions on the road. What happened is, after Jacob got blessed by his father and got sent to Haran, Esau found out. So he sent his younger son, Eliphaz, to, 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 to pursue Jacob, to pass him on the road, to meet him and, and cross down and kill him and take all his stuff. So Jacob realizes that somebody's following him. Hmm. So he just stops. When he saw who it was, he said, he realized that Esau had sent his son to kill him. So Jacob said to the little, to this, he's a teenager. He said, look, don't kill me. He was, it was, it was either Faz and the men that hang out, hang out, hung out with him. He said, don't kill me, just take what I got. Take what I got. It was fast. He said, think of this as an act of righteousness on your part that you don't kill me. And the Lord caused Eliphaz to have favor on Jacob. So he said, I'm not going to kill you. But they took everything. They took the silver, the gold. They took the donkeys, everything his father gave him. All they left him with was some clothes on his back. Okay? So that's why we read that Jacob didn't have nothing when he was going to Haran because it had been stolen from him by Esau. Mm. So now we got the birthright. We got them being born, we got the birthright, we got the, 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 the cave, the, the burial plot, we got the blessing. Now Esau done stole all of his, the goods that his father gave him to go away. So it's just a lot of conflict between these two brothers. So then he goes to Haran, and we know about what happened in Haran. He worked seven years for Rachel, but got lived. Then he had to work another seven years. They gave him Rachel, but he had to work another seven years for her. And then uh, he, he had to work another six years because he didn't have the wages that, that he was supposed to get when he was working. So he's deceived by Laban. Jacob is deceived. Now he's getting a little bit of playback. He's deceived by Laban. And then he's given, he's given Leah instead of Rachel. So now he's at the place where he did the seven years for Rachel, the seven years for Leah, he did the six years of labor, and now he's rich. Well, when he was, when he was just serving, Laban, Laban had no problem. Because while Jacob was serving all those years, Laban was getting rich. Okay? Laban was the one getting all the riches. But now in these last six years, Jacob getting rich. Laban got an issue. He said, look, he getting rich off of my stuff. And his son said, yeah, he getting rich off of our stuff. 
So when, when Jacob would talk to them, their faces were not looking at him as pleasant as they used to look. Mm. They scoping him out. They, they had some animosity growing up, growing between them. So then the Lord comes to Jacob and says, you need to go. Just leave. Leave later. And when we read about him leaving, his wife agreed. But for some reason, Rachel stole these idols. She took her father's idols with her, with her. So we need to understand why she stole those idols. Rachel stole the idols because they were magician witchcraft affairs. Okay. She knew that these idols were special to her father. I'm going to tell you in history books, it tells you how they made these idols. They would take a man who was the firstborn son, they would kill him, cut off his head. Mm. Then they would take the head, they would shave all the hair off the head. Then they'd take the head and put it in the salt water to preserve it. Once it got preserved, they took it out and anointed it with oil. Then they took the head, they took a, 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 a tablet, a small, little small tablet made of copper or gold, and they would write the name. It doesn't tell us what the name was. They would write the name on this tablet, and they would put that little piece of copper, piece, piece of paper underneath the tongue mm -hmm. of the man who was dead. Then they would put this head in a room where they could light up candles around it. Mm -hmm. And whenever Laban wanted to know something about somebody, he would go in this room and he would light up these candles and he would bow down to this head. And because of the name underneath the tongue of this head, a spirit would speak to Laban. Mm -hmm. Tell Laban everything he knew. Rachel knew this. She didn't want her father to know where her and Jacob were going, so she stole those idols. So when you see Laban pursuing them, he wants that idol back. That idol was more, really more important than his grandchildren and his daughters and stuff. He just made Jacob feel bad about them, but the last thing he said, why did you steal my idols? Mm -hmm. and Jacob said, I didn't steal your idols. They couldn't find the idol, okay? They couldn't find his idols. So when Laban pursues him, he says, look, what have you done? Why did you steal away from me? Why did you carry my daughters and my grandchildren away? Why did you carry them away? Why did you go away like in secret when I'm out there shearing my sheep? I could have gave you a party to, if you had just waited. He said, you know, I got the power to really hurt you, but last night, the God of your father came to me in a dream and said, I bet not hurt you in any way. Mm. I know you want to get back home. I know that's why you left, but why did you have to steal my idols? We couldn't find the idols. Now, the reason why Laban is so important in the Esau story is because Laban did a, 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 a covenant of peace with Jacob, we call it the mitzvah. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. They're the ones that did this peace treaty between themselves. And Laban specifically said, I will not cross that line. You stay on that side, I'll stay on this side. But in the legacy book, we find out that Laban did not keep that covenant, okay? He didn't go over the line, but he sent his son to tell Esau a story about how Esau had, how, how Jacob had treated Esau so wrong. He said, he sent these, uh, he sent these, these messengers to Esau, Laban did, after they did the mitzvah. He sent these messengers to Esau. And the, and the messenger said, have you heard what Jacob did to your uncle, Laban? How he came to him naked? How he brought him into his house? How he made him great? 
How he gave him his two daughters and his two handmaids. How he, now he got a huge flock of stocks and cattle and herds and camels and donkeys and silver and gold and abundance. And once he got wealthy, he left. He left in secret while I was shearing my sheep. Well, this made Esau so angry. So now Esau, in his anger, is burning within him. I, I, you know, he got the, Jacob got the birthright. He got the burial plot. He got the blessings. And I told you about the, the time that they had an encounter where he done, Esau stole all of Jacob's inherit all of the things that his father had given him to send him to Haran, he stole that from him on the road. So now Esau was still angry about all these other things that he, now Jacob not only did him wrong, he done did his uncle wrong too. I'm killing him. I'm going to kill this man. So Esau gathered up his children and his household, about 60 men. And he gathered up the, 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 the uh, children of Seir, the Hittite, about 340 men. So the Esau got 400 men, and they're going to go and seek to destroy and plunder and kill Jacob before he gets home. So after, but the thing of it is, in the history book, it also tells us that when Laban's messengers left Esau, they went to Rebekah's house, because they came to Rebekah too. And they told Rebekah what, es what Laban had done and that Esau was going up against his brother. So Rebekah ga gathered 72 of Isaac's messengers mm -hmm. and they went to meet Jacob along the way. Now Jacob knew his people, his father's people. So when he saw them, he greeted them, he was happy to see them and all of that. And they said, and your parents said, well, but listen, your mother sent us to tell you that Esau was on the way to kill you. And she says, listen to my counsel. Tell him to listen to my counsel. When Esau comes, appease him, supplicate him, beg him. Do not speak rashly to him. And give him a present of everything that God has blessed you with. Maybe his anger will be appeased. Maybe his anger will go away. And it will save you and save your children and your, and your wives. He said, but, and remember, it's your duty to honor him because he is your oldest brother. So when Jacob heard that Esau was on the way to kill him, he lifted up his voice and he cried. And then he did as his mother had commanded him. Now, Jacob wasn't aware that Laban had sent these messengers to Esau until the messengers told, came and told his mother. Then the mother sent some more messengers to Jacob. But now he knows that Esau's on his way to kill him. So now what he does is he sends a message of peace to his brother. He sends some messengers to, to uh, Esau. You can find that in Genesis chapter 32. Verse 3, it says, And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded him, he commanded them, saying, they, Thus shall thou speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith this, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and donkeys and flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I, might find, that I may find grace in thy sight. But Esau rejects the message. The messengers return in verse 6 of chapter 32. And they said, we came to your brother Esau and he's coming to meet you with 400 men. So when he heard that his brother was still angry, and that his brother was going to kill him, he, he became fearful. But then he prayed. In, in, in Genesis, his prayer is, starts in verse 32 and verse 8, verse 9. And it's a little bit shorter prayer than what they give in the history book. 
So I want to read the prayer out the history book. He said, Jacob, and Jacob prayed to the Lord his God. And he said, O Lord God of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, thou didst say unto me when I went away from my father's house, saying, I am the Lord God of thy father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. Unto thee do I give this land and thy seed after thee. And I will make thy seed as the stars of heaven, and thou shalt spread forth to the four sides of heaven, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So what's the first thing that Jacob did in his prayer? He reminded God of the promise. When we pray in our own personal lives, we got to remind God of his word, of the promises. It's not for us to remember. It's for him to know that we got it and we accept it. And, that, and because we're praying it back to him, that's letting him know that, he, that we heard his word and that we believe in his word and we have faith in his word. So here is Jacob in this prayer. And he's reminding the Lord his God of the promise for his family for Abraham and Isaac, for his children, that they would be given the land of Canaan and that all the families of the earth will be blessed through them. In verse 18, and this is from Jasher chapter 32. I think it's 32, is it 31? 32. Verse... Uh, 18, and thou didst establish thy words and did give unto me riches and children and cattle as the utmost wish wishes of my heart didst thou give unto thy servant. And thou didst give unto me all that I asked from thee so that I lacked nothing. Remember I said it's his children. We should be in a place where we lack nothing yeah. because we give everything to him. All of our issues we give to him. We pray, we give it to him. He gives us his peace. And so we can, and then he talks to us so that we can help us through the problem. And a lot of times he's already in front of us taking care of the problem. So we're not to worry. We're supposed to cast our cares to him and walk in faith. Yeah. So then he says, uh, And thou didst afterwards say unto me, Return to thy parents and to thy birthplace, and I will still do well with thee. And now that I have come, and thou didst deliver me from Laban, I shall fall in the hands of Esau, who will slay me. Yea, together with my mothers, well, together with the mothers of my children. Now therefore, <laughs> O Lord God, deliver me, I pray thee. Also from the hands of my brother Esau, for I am greatly afraid of him. And if there is no righteousness in me, do it for the sake of Abraham and my father Esau. For I know that through kindness and mercy have I acquired this wealth. Now therefore I beseech thee to deliver me this day with thy kindness and to answer me. And then Jacob stopped praying to the Lord. And once he stopped praying to the Lord, he went and talked to his servants, and they decided to come up with a way to appease Esau so Esau wouldn't kill him. But the thing of it is, God, the Lord God, heard his prayer. That particular night, Jacob wrestled with the Lord. He left. When, when, the, when the morning came, he was a little limp. But while that was happening in the morning, God, the Lord, had sent four angels to the camp of Esau. This is in the book of Jasher. He heard his prayers, and he sent these angels of heaven, and they went before Esau. And what they basically did was they put the fear of Jacob into Esau. 
Okay. So these angels, there's only one angel that came at a time. One angel came, but it appears as if 2,000 men were riding on horses with all kind of swords and war materials, and they appeared before Esau, and Esau fell off his horse. He was so afraid. His men scattered. They were so afraid. And, 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 they, and the men, the, the, the angels would yell, was yelling at him. And, he, and the angels said to him, we are the servants of Jacob who is a servant of God, and who can stand against us? And Esau said, oh then my lord, brother Jacob is your lord? Now he on his way to kill his brother, right? Mm -hmm. But now he's scared. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, my lord, brother Jacob is your lord, whom I have not seen 20, for 20 years, and now that I have come this day to see him, you gonna treat me in this way? And the angel answered and said, As the Lord lives, were not Jacob of whom you were speaking your brother, we would have killed every last one of you. But only of a kind of Jacob, we're not going to do nothing. So that first angel left. So Esau, go ahead. You have a question? Oh, five minutes. Okay. That first angel left, and then the second angel came. Same thing. Third angel came. Same thing. Fourth angel came. Now Esau is realizing that this, realizing this is serious. If his brother got this many men, but it was angels, but they couldn't. He couldn't tell it was the angels. But if his brother got four leads of two thousand men coming before him to take care of stuff, I better meet this man in a peaceful way. Mm -hmm. So now his his walk toward Jacob is peaceful. Okay. So just to go back over the conflicts between Jacob and Esau, because it looks like I'm not going to finish today. It started in the mother's womb, two nations fighting. Then the next time we hear about the birthright, if, when we read the legacy books, we find out that not only did he get the birthright that day, but he also got the burial plot for the family. And then Jacob got the blessing. Then when he did come back, after he got the blessing and he came back home, Esau's so mad he wants to kill him. Jacob has, his father sends Jacob away with all these gold and silver and donkeys and all kind of stuff. But Esau sends his young son behind him to kill Jacob. But Jacob, realizing somebody's pursuing him, tells his, tells his nephew, look, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Just take everything I have. So his son, his Esau's son didn't kill him. His name was Eliphaz. He didn't kill him, but he stole everything from him. Just left him with the clothes on his back. So now we're at the point where, where Jacob finished working with Laban. And, and we found out that Laban, even though they did this covenant of peace, a, a treaty peace, Laban said, I won't cross the line. And he specifically said, I won't cross the line. Mm -hmm. But he said nothing about his sons. Mm -hmm. So he sent his sons his messages to Esau and got this and got this story that favors Laban and how Jacob and did Laban wrong. So now Esau mad about the birthright, the birth plot. He's mad about the blessing. He's mad about him going to his uncle and doing these things to his uncle. His, he just feels Jacob is not a good person. So we've got this constant conflict back and forth between Esau and Jacob all throughout the word of God. All throughout, his, in our Bibles, it's very short. It says, Jacob got the birthright. Didn't tell us about the birth plot. Mm. Okay. Then it says, uh, he got the blessings. It says Jacob went away, but he didn't have nothing. It didn't tell us that Esau stole all the stuff from him. That's why he didn't have that when he got to Haran. So it's all this constant historical stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. So next week we'll finish up with the other parts so that you can see that when Esau came to the funeral of his brother, he had an ulterior motive for coming. 
his brother ain't gonna be buried in the birth plot. Hmm. Because the birth plot, as far as he was concerned, belonged to him and the sons of Esau. So at the funeral, he's gonna start some stuff. Hmm. So that's what we're gonna talk about next week. And it reminds me so much of what we go through today. Hmm. Families come together to bury somebody and they fight over who gonna get what and who gonna do this and who gonna get that. I'm getting a car, I'm getting a house, no you're not. All of this stuff going on, all of this dynamics in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. So that's what we'll talk about uh, next Wednesday. Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, any questions, anybody? I know it's a lot. Like I said, you can download the book of Jasher off the internet. It's free. Yes, J-A-S-H-E-R, the book of Jasher, PDF. Just put PDF behind it and you can put it as a, a what's it called? Uh, well, I can't think of what it's called, but I know it's a PDF file. <laughs> and you can get it for free. You don't have to go buy the book. And then you can sort of figure out where I'm going to and where, where I get this information from out of the book of Jasher. I'll try to be more clear what chapters I'm in when I'm in that book so that you can follow along. Anyway, I just want to thank you for coming today. I know this is the end of our time together. But before we leave, I always got to ask. It's, it's, it's part of our mission to see if anybody doesn't know Jesus Christ. Because everything that we're doing, everything that's our mission is all about God's salvation plan. When I look at what we do here at this church, it's all about the salvation that God has for people and reaching out to them and letting them know that God is real and Jesus is real. So if you don't know him, today is a good day to know him. And if you want to know him, and it's in your heart to do so, please pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you now knowing, Lord, that I need a Savior, for I am a sinner. And I know that you have redeemed me, Lord, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so now, Lord, I accept this free gift that Jesus has given for me. I believe in Jesus and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, I will live the rest of my life as a child of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you said that prayer, you are now a part of God's kingdom. Amen. Write today's date down. This is your new birthday. Mm -hmm. I wish somebody had told me mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I know it was September 1998, but I don't know what day. Mm -hmm. But write today's date down so you'll know the day that you became a new person. Amen. In him. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day, everyone. Mm -hmm.